We ain't got that revelation that John had that I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. And we're carnal and we think that John was a being carnal too. But John wasn't. John had a revelation that he loves me. Jesus loves me. He loves me. And we need to get that revelation. He loves me better than he does squirrels and sparrows and fowls of the air. So I don't need to worry about and take no thought of how I'm going to get my bills paid or my needs met up. Or you don't neither. Amen? Verse 25. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit into his stature? You can't change your height from every bit, can you? Well, why take you thought for your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, we, we could, if we really thought about that, we could get a hold of something here. Solomon was rich, 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 rich. Silver covered and gold covered houses and buildings and everything. And even one of them ladies that said it didn't have to work and to do all that to get its needs met, God took care of it. Even Solomon and all his glory and all the riches he had that was more important than all that. We don't have to worry about it, do we? A lot of people's having problems losing their homes and don't know how they got little children and stuff. Make it. If we'll turn to this right here, and we'll just let God give us a revelation that he loves us and that we need to be a seeking after him and not what he's got, then we can, we can work this out, I believe. Don't you? Verse 20, or verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into heaven, shall he not much more clothe you? Randall preached one of the best messages on faith up there tonight. I hear it, and I mean that. I do. I mean that. You'd about have to be stupid or ignorant or without understanding to not understand part of that. Look here. O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, say it. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. What shall we eat or what shall we drink or where are we with? How shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Well, you ain't supposed to take thought saying. You can't keep the thought from coming there. Deb, but you don't have to say it. You don't have to say it. That's a vehicle that puts it into the spiritual end of it to cause good or bad either one to happen, according to what we we'll say. If we say, my needs met, God's taking care of me, I can look here in this book and I don't. I can watch the spurs and the fowls and he takes care of them, I'm more important than them. Run that thought out. Cast down every thought and imagination that tries to exalt itself against what this word says. Amen? Therefore, take no thought saying, how am I going to have my needs met? Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, Jesus ain't no liar. He is truthful. And I believe as much as I'm standing here tonight, Brenda Gross, I believe that there's going to be some things that's happened from this place right here and because of this place that will be amazing. I believe that. I believe that. Because of the standard of the Word of God is high on these broadcasts, I think. And God honors that. And I don't believe you can get his, the standard of his word high if you don't love him. 
You can't seek after knowledge and a provision and start uh, get a standard to come up much high. But whenever you seek after the one that makes a provision, the provider, and get a relationship with them, then the standard will raise up. Hallelujah.